Hey, fifth graders, it's Mrs. Seals back for our next science lab. So last week we started talking about a physical property called conductivity, which is the ability to allow or to conduct energy. Um, and we focused on electrical conductivity. This week we're going to still be talking about conductivity. However, we are focusing on thermal conductivity today. So let's get into it. So here's your target. I can classify matter based on measurable, testable, and observable physical properties, including the ability to conduct or insulate thermal energy. So let's remind ourselves what is conductivity. Hopefully you remember it's the ability to conduct energy. In this case, thermal energy, which is the same thing as heat energy. To conduct means <clears throat> to allow energy to pass through it. So what is a conductor? A conductor is a substance or object that allows the flow of energy. Today we we're talking about thermal conductors. So these are materials or objects that allow thermal energy or heat to, to flow through them. Here are some examples. Diamond, silver, copper, gold, graphite, iron, or steel. So you'll notice lots of different types of metals are good thermal conductors. That is why I had this picture, let's go back, of this, um, this pot right here. Uh, that's why most pots and pans are used for cooking and baking and things like that. Um, and they're made out of metal because metal is a really good thermal conductor and it allows, um, you know, the heat to travel easily to be able to heat up, you know, everything that's in that pot or that pan instead of just what's right on top of the, the burner or the stove. All right. Um, so those are some good thermal conductors. An insulator would be, remember, an, a substance or object that stops or slows the flow of energy. Today we're talking about thermal insulators, so these are materials or objects that stop heat from flowing through them. Here are some examples. Um, wood, cotton or wool, and plastic. So a, a lot of times um, these are a lot of times cooking utensils are made of wood or plastic. That's because when you're stirring your food or your soup or whatever you're cooking, these things prevent you from getting burned. They prevent your hand from getting burned because if the spoon part, like look at this wooden spoon, if that wooden spoon part is down in whatever you're cooking is really, really hot, the heat cannot travel up to your hand and burn you because, um, wood is a thermal insulator. It stops the heat from traveling through it. Same with plastic. If we go back to that first picture that I showed you about with the pot, you'll notice, and if you think about pots and pans, most of them, the handle is coated in plastic or rubber or wood or something similar. Because again, if this all is all metal and this is all metal, which are conductors of heat, the, the heat's going to travel. And if this was not coated in a, an insulator, such as plastic or rubber or wood, when you go to pick the pot up to move it, your hand would burn. So insulators protect us from, from getting burned. All right, so we're going to do an experiment. So we know that metals are good conductors of heat. I just told you that, we thought of some examples. This is why pots and pans are made of metal. But today, our experiment, we're going to see which type of metal is the best conductor of heat. Some conductors are better, or some metals are better conductors than others. All right, so to do this experiment, we're gonna be using, I'm gonna stop sharing and then I'll come back to that. We're gonna be using something called a conductivity star, and it looks like this. So the way this works is that each of these different little um, points sticking out from the star is a different type of metal. All right, so what's gonna happen is when it's time to start the experiment, I'm going to be putting a little um, blob of butter on the end of each one of these. You could also do wax, you could do, I guess, chocolate really anything that melts quickly. And then I'm going to be lighting a candle 
and holding the conductivity star over the candle just like this. So the candle is going to get this very, very hot. So the way that we're gonna know which metal is the best conductor of thermal energy is by the one that melts the butter first because that means the heat was able to travel the fastest through that type of metal and get to the butter and melt it, okay? So the types of metals on here are aluminum. This one's aluminum, and I'm gonna tell you in just a minute about all the different kinds, tell you things that they're used for so you can kind of have some background knowledge to make your hypothesis. We have aluminum, we have brass, we have steel, we have nickel, and we have copper, okay? Aluminum, brass, steel, nickel, copper. So let's look at um, some different uses of these metals. So let's start with aluminum. Aluminum is a pretty common one. Um, soda cans and the little pull tabs on top of them are made from aluminum. The um, hubcaps or wheels of a car are aluminum. Um, canned food, the cans that canned food come in, all aluminum. Also aluminum foil. Um, that we use is made from aluminum. This is brass. Brass kind of looks like gold. It's not the same as gold. It's much, much, much less expensive than gold. Um, a lot of screws are made out of brass and a lot of instruments. These instruments are called brass instruments because they are made out of brass. Trumpet, trombone, tuba, French horn, there's some others as well. Steel, steel is very, very common type. Um, steel is actually a, a mixture of several different kinds of metals that are melted down together. Some silverware is made of steel. It's called silverware, but silver is actually very expensive. So um, most of this, the silverware that we have in our houses is made from steel. Um, also screws and um, nuts and bolts and nails and washers and things like that are made of steel. Um, you might have some stainless steel things in your home like a sink. Uh, maybe your countertops are stainless steel. Um, different fixtures like faucets and things like that can be made out of steel. Nickel is another type of, of metal. Um, nickel is found in batteries. Coins are made out of nickel, not just nickels, other coins too, um, and keys. And then the last one is copper. Copper, we discussed last week, is the best um, electrical insulator. A lot of wires and charger cords and things like that have copper on the inside. Um, telephone pole wires outside on the streets, those have copper inside. A lot of the plumbing inside of your house, like the water lines are made from copper as well. Copper is very expensive. So um, a lot of people think that pennies are made of copper and pennies used to be made out of copper. However, I think since 1982, um, they are now mostly made with a different type of metal called zinc because what happened um, since the price of copper went up so much, the amount of copper that it took to make a penny was actually worth more than the penny itself. So they were losing money by making pennies out of actual copper. So now pennies are mostly made out of a different metal called zinc, and they have a tiny, tiny bit of copper in them. All right, so those are the five metals that we're going to be testing out. Aluminum, brass, steel, nickel, copper. So before we do this experiment, based on what I just told you, based on other things you know about different types of metals, I would like for you to make a hypothesis um, to see which of your, um, or which of these metals do you think is the best conductor of thermal energy? So which one do you think the heat is going to travel through the fastest and get to the butter and melt it the fastest. Make your hypothesis. I will go ahead and get this set up. Um, all right, so I have my butter here. I'm gonna get it put on the ends of the conductivity star. Oh, I already I just took it out of the freezer and it's already getting mushy. 
All right. My, all my pieces of butter are the same size because remember when we do an experiment, we can only have one thing that changes. The variable in this experiment is, are the types of metals on the conductivity star. I have to make sure I use the same size um, mound of butter so that we know that the one that's melting fastest isn't because it's the smallest, it's because that metal truly is the best conductor. Oops, sorry. Also the length of all of these is the same as well. Um, we are using fire, so I'm being safe. I have my hair tied back. I have a fire blanket nearby. I also have a fire extinguisher, um, to, you know, just as a precaution. Remember that this is not something you do at home. Um, I doubt you even have a conductivity star, but even if you do, this isn't something you do without a parent's permission. All right, so Again, let me show you from this angle what the different metals are. We have aluminum, steel, no, I'm sorry, aluminum, brass, steel, nickel, and copper. So I'm going to get my um, candle into position. Going to light the candle. And now we watch and wait. I'm gonna get it really close so it can heat it up. So again, we're looking to see which metal, which dollop of butter on which metal will melt the fastest. And that will tell us which metal is the best conductor of thermal energy. Again, we have aluminum, brass, steel, nickel, and copper. Just watching right now. I know it's kind of hard for you to see, um, but I will tell you if any of them start, start melting. Oh my goodness, look, the copper one just melted so much that it fell off. Okay, so copper, it seems like copper is our best conductor. That one already fell off. It got, it, so that means the heat was able to travel through the copper to the butter fast enough to melt it that quickly. Let's see which one, hap, which one melts next. You can't really tell, but the aluminum one is kind of turning a little bit. It looks like it's getting soft enough to maybe start melting. Oh, there goes aluminum. All right, so copper was one, aluminum is two. Let's see which one falls number three. So that means copper is our best conductor. Aluminum is our second best conductor. The heat traveled through the copper the fastest, through the aluminum the second fastest. Let's see which one is number three. Oh, which one, the, the steel, this one, did you see it turning? It was turning, it's getting softer. Oh, there goes the brass. Brass is number three. We'll see which one is four and then which one is last. So again, to review, the copper, the butter that was on the copper melted the fastest. That means copper is the best, out of these five metals, copper is the best thermal conductor because the heat traveled through it the fastest to melt the butter. Um, the aluminum melted second. That means aluminum is the second best conductor of thermal energy. The brass was third. We're waiting to see what's next. This is the steel and the nickel that we have left.
Steel and nickel definitely aren't as good of conductors as copper, aluminum, and brass. They're taking a while. They still are conductors of, of heat energy. They're just not as good. It looks like the steel is getting ready to fall. Oh, and there goes our steel. So that means nickel is last. Let me blow out our candle. All right. So let's talk about our results. Ooh. So we were determining which metal is the best conductor of thermal energy. And the way we did that was by using a conductivity star. And we found out through our experiment that out of these five metals, the copper is the best thermal conductor. And the way we know that is because the butter on the end of it, on our conductivity star, melted the fastest. So that means the heat traveled from the center point through the copper to the butter, just like that. That's why it melted first, because they're all the same distance away and um, they all were receiving the same amount of heat and they had the same size butter, but the copper melted faster. The aluminum was number two, the brass was three, the steel was four, and the nickel was number five. I hope that you guys enjoyed um, learning about thermal conductors and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.